Stranger Things is a series of Netflix movies very popular with teenagers. Some of the themes of Stranger Things comes from Dungeons and Dragons. There is a demigorgon who lives in the upside down world and who has gained access to our world via a wormhole. The sci-fi quality of Stranger Things reminds me of a stern Gerlach magnet experiment which cannot be explained by quantum mechanics in which they therefore attribute the results to a demigorgon, but with a theory of elementary waves this experiment is easily explained. Unfortunately, I cannot explain all this in five minutes. I normally assume that a young audience will have fallen asleep if I drone on beyond five minutes. I'm sorry that I have to exceed that normal limit. A stern Gerlach magnet divides a stream of electrons into spin up versus spin down, or if we turn it on its side, spin to the right versus spin to the left. And we line up four such magnets in as you see, they're the blue things with a red boundary. And we have an electron gun. The electron goes through the first magnet, X, and it comes out either spinning to the right or spinning to the left. And we take all the electrons spinning to the left and block them and then feed the ones spinning to the right into that middle pair of magnets called Z plus and Z minus. Now, we don't know whether the electron passes between those two magnets at the top path or the lower path. And as long as we don't know that, then that pair of magnets act as if there's nothing there. So if right-handed spinning electrons go in on one side, then they come out spinning right on the other side. And then we feed them once again into a magnet X, which divides them into spin to the right versus spin to the left. And since there are no electrons spinning to the left at this point. When they hit the target screen, they make a point at R only, spinning to the right, and no point at L. This video answers the question why electrons behave differently if we watch them than if we don't watch them. Now, Dr. Stephen Brenner suggested that we should put an eye in this experiment to observe whether the electron crosses between the two middle magnets, and the eye will observe whether or not an electron went past on the lower trajectory. And what do you know? Weird as can be, as long as that eye is there looking, suddenly spots appear at both the right and the left, so it changes the outcome of the experiments just to look, just to find out. So when this was discovered, it was decided that this was a stranger thing and must therefore be due to the demigorgon who you see here on your screen. Now in those years there was a debate whether to call quantum mechanics QM or D and D as suggested by Dr. Brenner, but QM survived, but nevertheless we had this demigorgon making a stranger thing happen in this experiment. Further research over the decades proved two things. First is that if the eye is closed, then we get just the one spot on the target screen. If the eye is open, then we get both spots on the target screen, so that it's clear to everyone in the D&D &D community that the decisive thing is what people know. If we know whether the electron used the upper or lower path in that middle pair of magnets, that leads to one result. If they don't know, if things are kind of hidden, then you get a different outcome on the target screen. And it was discovered over the years that the demigorgon does not have two faces as predicted by D&D, &D, but rather no face, sometimes called demigorgon tulip head, although his proper name is demigorgon complementarity. My name is Jeff, with two Fs like the two feathers on a Boyd, and my last name is Boyd. Now, our team came along in the first episode investigating these stranger things, and we met a scientist named Eleven, uh, L for short. L puts out something called L waves, which have superpowers, which we will now talk about. The L waves go in the opposite direction of Dr. Brenner's waves, and it turns out that the L waves can completely explain this experiment without any need to invoke a demigorgon or complementarity. In other words, the decisive thing is not whether humans know or don't know whether the path Z plus or Z minus is used between the two central magnets. The decisive things is the L waves. Those elementary waves are the trajectories. They are the flight plans for how the electrons will subsequently come through the equipment. The L waves start at the target and wend their way back through the four magnets to the electron gun. And if there is an L wave extending all that distance, then an electron will, from time to time, follow that 
L wave backwards. But if, on the other hand, the L wave becomes obstructed and can't make it all the way to the electron gun, then of course there will be no electrons going in that direction. So the decisive factor turns out to be whether this eye placed down there in the middle by Dr. Brenner uh, is opened or closed because if it's open then it's emitting a small amount of energy. Now scientists at Hawkins Energy said well that's negligible it has no effect on the electrons which have massive amounts of energy compared to that but with L waves that makes a difference because an L wave conveys zero energy and therefore it can be blocked by the tiniest amount of energy coming in from the side and blocking the pathway as does energy from this eyeball. So now when you have an L wave starting at the left of the target screen it goes back through the first magnet. When it gets into that pair of magnets in the middle it can no longer get through the lower pathway. It can only go through the top pathway and therefore it acquires inside that pair of magnets a plus spin because that's what the upper pathway is. It's a plus spin and therefore when it comes out of that pair of magnets and is fed into the last magnet it still has a plus spin and it can get through that last magnet because that magnet has no problems with a plus spin and lets it right on through to the electron gun and because there is an L wave stretching all the way from the target screen to the electron gun therefore from time to time electrons will follow it backwards and that explains the data. Now on the other hand consider what happens to the elementary rays if the eyeball is closed. An elementary ray starting at the L point on the target screen, left-handed spin, goes through the that magnet there and continues to have a left-handed spin as it enters the middle pair of magnets Z plus and Z minus. Now if the eyeball is closed then that pair of magnets has no effect at all. It acts as if it's not there. And therefore the elementary ray goes through that pair of magnets into the last magnet near the electron gun, still carrying a left-handed spin, but it cannot get through that magnet because the L port is blocked, closed for that magnet, so it can't get through. And therefore when the eyeball is closed, an elementary ray can pass through three but not four of the magnets cannot reach the electron gun and therefore of course there will be no electrons following that ray backwards to point L on the target screen so if the eyeball is closed then there's no point L on the target screen you only have one point at R. So to sum it all up waves from L are more powerful than the evil demigorgon of Dr. Brenner without claiming that it has anything to do with humans knowing or not knowing which pathway is used. The eyeball does not bring human knowledge. The decisive factor is that the eyeball brings a tiny amount of energy which is a trump card stronger than the zero energy L waves trying to get through. So from Eleven's experiment we learned a couple of things. One is that L waves carry zero energy and another is that elementary waves can carry spin. They're quite remarkable. They can carry spin.